Hello, welcome to Board Games with Niramas. I'm Joseph and I'm here with Draco. He's in the middle of a bunch of games and he, he's going to try to help me to uh, unbox all of them. So we're going to unbox um, 10 games at once, which is sort of a bit of my, my desperation of, you know, uh, every time I walk by that, that shelf I have, I have a full Kallax shelf with just games from Essence Spiel that is in shrink. And I feel like I have to take care of them. Poor games, they're not getting any attention. And so on. So I'm thinking, let's just start by doing 10 of these, some smaller, some medium sized boxes, and get through them and see if we find anything cool. And then I'll be back in, in a few weeks and do the same again. And I also do, of course, we'll be unboxing a bunch of, uh, you know, one by one uh, sort of games as well. Because there's, there's so many games uh, out there. So let's just start over here inside. Here we have Escape Pods. This is from Two Tomatoes. Really nice guys. I met them uh, two years now at Essence Wheel. And they've been such, such a nice guys to talk to. I think they're from Spain. And this box got a little bit smashed in the delivery here. But So let's see what, uh, what uh, is in here. I don't know much about this game. But it's the same with most of these. I don't know that much about them, but I think I can figure something out by just looking at them like this. So here we have, this is kind of cool. These uh, wooden tokens with different symbols on them. And the cards with the rubber band, that's that's unusual. Let's look through this. So here we have, hmm. These cards with numbers. These look like we could put these tokens on here, maybe. And they are different colors. And I mean, some of these games, oh, most of these games, I'll, I'll do a, a gameplay video for up ahead as well. <clears throat> but I'm thinking it could be a good idea to look through them and, you know, punch them out and all that so they're ready. So, um, some kind of token here, some rubble, something. And some kind of, maybe these are like airship, you know, spaceships or whatever. And not the greatest tile compo <laughs> component quality, sadly. It's like you can feel it often in games when you punch them out. Um, if they are thick and nice, then they just pop out. But if they are like this, you have to apply some pressure. And it's like a bit, mm. yeah, but that doesn't really matter when you play, of course. But it's like they're a bit thin maybe, but I don't know if that fix the game at all and tell me in the live chat if there's any issues with the sound or with the picture or anything like that so I can try to fix it I think the stream is running nicely I'm happy to finally figured out sort of uh, how YouTube's new streaming uh, studio works so seems like I can have planned streams and get them to work wow can't almost can't punch these little thingies out they were really small hmm or like that Ah, uh, they're like sticking to the thingy. Again, not that high quality in in the punch out board. Ah, uh, and my idea was also that since I will be sitting here and doing a lot of punching out and you know all that. Meanwhile, we could do some you know talking about different things, doing some questions and answers and so on. So if you have any questions about the game, the channel, uh, whatever you want, <laughs> then. Uh, just shoot away in the chat, ask away any questions you might have. Hey Buster, and hey Yogi Bear, thank you for that. And you might not have any questions, you don't need to make up any questions, just that, you know, we can have a chat while we just sit here anyway, because there's gonna be a bit of, this is gonna be like a slow stream, it's not gonna be one of those boom boom where you can, a lot of stuff happens, it's just gonna be a game after game of being opened, and hmm. This, this looks like I want to place tiles here, but there's no tiles. <laughs> but I guess there's like rubble and stuff here. I mean, it's called escape pods. I guess we're going to have our little pods and try to escape somehow, and there's going to be stuff in the way. Um, I think this is... Yeah, okay, so there you can see a little bit of the, how it looks set up. Uh, one thing that hits me is there's no rule book. So that's kind of interesting. Is there like rules on the cards? Um, <laughs> I mean, 
Maybe that's an error. That's interesting. There's no, uh, there's no rule book. Huh. Well, that's that's kind of different. Uh, we'll have to, you know, I will have to look, go to Board Game Geek and look up if there's a rule book there, because that is a bit weird. Now I shouldn't say too much because I did, I gave, I gave out my game, Draco's Adventure, the game I designed. I gave that to a few reviewers on Essence Field. And I didn't have a rule book for that, but I told them I didn't have a rule book. <laughs> it's coming in PDF and I haven't really been working on that. I'm going to do that in January. I'm going to work on the rule book. And then there will be a Kickstarter uh, launching in February for the game. Because the game is sort of done. It's just that I need to finish the rule book. And it's so hard to write a good rule book, in my opinion. And I have such a high standard as well because I've been opening so many boxes that had bad rule books. So. So that's escape pods. Now let's look at this little one here from uh, GDM. I think they're also from Spain. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see, I should have one of these. One of these thingies. And I'm almost. <clears throat> I'm, ha I'm having a. I have a cold or something. I think. Uh, some virus. So uh, I'm a bit exhausted after last after yesterday. <laughs> Uh, I was up all day yesterday, did a bunch of things. So, Mastabas. And this is... Yeah, they're from Spain. So this is in Spanish and German, and there's French. Here's English. Okay, so let's get rid of the other one. And... Yeah, not that many rules, right? I hate uh, when the rule books fold out like this, but what can you do? Then we have some tokens. And just some standard meeples and cubes, nothing fancy. And I think Mastabas is because I played the other game I got from them. One of the other was a Gise. It was really fun little co-op game me and Martin played. That was the same size. It was also in Egypt, so I think there's something similar. I think it's like Pushulak or something like that. So here we have some cards with some different, well, mostly snakes and stuff on them. And yeah, they have like a whole series here of games that they released in 2019. Uh, Nishigigo is another one that we're going to open later on with the, with the uh, Japanese fish, <laughs> whatever that is about. I don't know. And again, if you have any you know questions or concerns and thoughts about the channel or suggestions for videos or games or whatever, just put it all in the live chat and I'll... I'll look at that um, while I'll do this uh, unboxing of 10 games. So that's two games done. Not that much to see in this one, uh, to be honest. So Word Bank, this is from uh, Blue Orange. Or Blue Orange, I guess, if I could speak French, which I can't. And this, I saw this on SSB uh, in a little demo, and it looked kind of cool. I, it's been a long time since I played a, a Word game, really. How do you open this? Uh, oh, it's oh, this is nice. Oh, I love this. Love when they do that. I have this magnetic lock. And yes, it's been a long time since I think it's been you know, like uh, Scrabble, basically. <laughs> it's the, the last I, I don't really play word games, which is kind of weird because I like language and words and, and all that. Uh, so here's the English rules. And yeah, so this looks cool. I, I look forward to play this. And it's not really a party game, like many of the word games are party games. I think this is more like a um, puzzle game or sort of. And it comes with it's a nice insert and a nice box for this you know, small game. But that's, you know, Blue Orange, they do nice stuff. And look at this. I love these crystals. These are sort of like the ones I have for, for Keyforge that I uh, use as amber. But these look amazing. Look at this. Uh, and you're going to try to gather these. I think this player colors as well, and you're trying to gather your, or I think you try to remove them actually. You try to get rid of your crystals basically, um, which is weird because they look amazing. Hey, Shish Kumar. And you do that by forming words. You put out like cards on the table, or, or you put out these letters on the table. And then you use these to form words, and by scoring, you know, more and more complicated 
Word, you get rid of your crystals somehow. And I like these kind of cards. These are pretty cool, I think. Uh, it's like the double game. Hey Bjorn! So yeah, love the box. I wish I could have a box like this for uh, Dracos Adventure. That would be cool, but then again I do instead. <laughs> sort of I do have, gonna, I have this insert from E-Raptor for the game, which is awesome. I'm gonna uh, show that off, off soon as well in some video. And this is a bigger box, so we have Ninja Knight. Now this has something really cool that I haven't seen in any other game. It's, it's like it's sort of a dexterity game in some ways, but it's dexterity by measuring because we're ninjas on these rooftops trying to get around with our hooks. And then we're gonna measure how far we can throw those hooks. So here's the board. It's kind of cool. I like circular boards as well. It's always cool with something different. So I have a circular board here, really thick, nice cardboard. Wow. Again, blue orange, uh, here again. And some stickers, <clears throat> not sure, sure how, where you put those. Don't like stickers because I'm bad at putting them, you know, nicely, but <clears throat> I guess I will have to do that carefully. So a rule book. And let's see what this is. So these are, like, I think, maybe these are like playboard. Looks like player colors and different characters. Yeah, and here we have like standees as well. The standees for the different, uh, were, were some kind of rat people or something, I don't know. Uh, small uh, guys there. And these are some ninja tokens as well. And this is really cool. <coughs> Sorry. This is really cool with these 3D things in games. You know, these are the guys that did uh, photosynthesis as well, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I love this kind of stuff in games. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna break it. When you have like 3D cardboard, I don't know what this is. Is it a tree? Or some kind of smoke cloud it looks like? Yeah, Buster, exactly. You gotta be, you gotta be really like, take your time with stickers. <laughs> and, and I'm not, you know, it's like when I, sometimes I get, well, pretty often I get these uh, requests on email. People made some, you know, someone made a game. And they ask me, oh, do you want to like film the game? And they ask if I can do a print and play. And I'm like, I always say no to print and plays. Uh, mo one, because it takes too much time. It would take, it's not worth it really. It would take too much time to do this for like uh, first published games and all that. It doesn't uh, provide that much, uh, you know, views either. Oh yeah, 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 I don't have a wife. If I had a wife, like wives or I'm not going to be prejud I'm not going to be, you know, judgmental, but for some reason, it seems like a lot of a lot of um, females I know are really good at this puzzling stuff or like putting stuff together. And I don't think that has to do with gender at all. I'm just you know. Anyway, so I can't do print and place really because first of all, it takes too much time, and second of all, if I'm gonna do it so it looks nice, so it represents their game good, which is you know the, what I my my what I want to do with the video. I don't want to you know make a mess of it, then it's going to take even a lot more time <laughs> if I'm going to do it nicely. So therefore I always, you know, turn down print and place. If, if, you know, there might be some case where, like Gaia Project, the, the prototype Gaia Project, I did do that print and play, but I did ask some friends to help me out, but I mean, I'm not going to turn that down, but most of the time I turn it down. Um, really nice playable, play thingies, look at this, with dials. <laughs> so. Wow, I think you like decide what you want to do. Like there's the hook. And wow, really nice laid cardboard. This is high quality people. And you know, the more and more I see these uh, blue orange games, I you know, I get so impressed. I mean, ever since of course, uh, photosynthesis which looked amazing. Okay, so then we have what is this? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are the rooftops. So I think we place these out and we have like a little roof, a little house here. I think we can put something here as well, I guess. And then we have the rooftops. And then we have the standees. And so let's say that I'm this hero over here or, or ninja, basically, it's the term. Then I would jump on the rooftops and there might be obstacles, I guess, in the way here. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I so look forward to play this. And then we have like another roof here. And what I do then, there's a bunch of these as well. So we're going to place them out here. A lot of these uh, buildings of different sizes and shapes and so on. And then <laughs> when they are out here on the, the city, basically where it is, then I'm going to have my little ninja guy and I'm going to use this rope here to try to figure out how far I can go. So I'm going to move around here and see how this works. Uh, so this is like our hook then. Um, okay, so how does this... Okay, so there's two of them, okay. So you have the hook there. And then you can... Oh, you can move this thing around. And then you're gonna measure like by... Uh, what's it called in English? Like eye... Hey, I guess. Like eye measuring. Like figuring out, okay, so I can go from there over there. <laughs> and you don't need to throw it, I think. You just need to like measure. So, okay, can I go over from this roof to this roof? Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, then I will jump over there, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's so cool. It's such a weird, like, innovative, different kind of component. Oh, this is something else. This is some kind of fist, basically. <laughs> Maybe we can fight some, some something with this. I don't know. <laughs> but it looks amazing. Uh, I look forward to playing this. And I think just by, you know, looking at it here, I, I sort of get more excited to um, to try it out. And the thing is also, you can, you can sort of, well, the, the viewers can sort of vote on in which order I play games, or like film games, more right. Like. Um, so if you're a patron, or if you were a Kickstarter backer for last year, and the same will be this year as well, or next year. Because we have not at New Year's Eve uh, yet. Well, anyway, then you can vote on Facebook. You can vote on which games to film in which order and so on. Oh, here's even uh, bigger roofs. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's like what's in the box. There's a bunch of these. So let's just try to put everything back together here. These we can just uh, put in here. Oh wow, these are amazing. I, I think the component quality overall in this game was impressive. And I see that we can fit everything back into the box though. <clears throat> Did come with some baggies here. That's good. And it's nice to have a little bit of a slower uh, stream today. <clears throat> just go through things one by one. And it's <clears throat> really nice for me to just, you know, get through, to get to looking at these games because there's so many of them in shrink in my shelf and it's like creating anxiety just um, seeing them all there and I want to play them all but you know it's not time so let's see this is these car no not cards these are like some kind of boards I don't think we need that baggy and this, I'm not really sure what, <coughs> what the stickers are for maybe they are for the for the building somehow <coughs> looks like the side of the buildings or something Oh, sorry. I have a bit of a cold. It's starting to get annoying. So, uh, yeah. That's Ninja Knight. And, yeah. Can't wait to play that one. <laughs> Try it out. Even though, I mean, like... I think it's not really my typical type of game. But who cares? Uh, so, then we have Wings of Glory. And I think this is not the uh, latest version. If I understand this correctly. This is the Battle of Britain. And uh, it's my first game ever that has this showing the components like this. Uh, I'm not used to that. Let's see if we can see that. This is from RS Games. And they uh, gave this to me at Essen. And I think I was like, ask, I was asking them for, for like the latest. Yeah, this is from 2018. I was asking them for like the latest uh, version. And they said I should start with this one because it's like building on that somehow. So I, I mean, I was happy to try that out and again it's not this is not my typical style of game either to have a world war ii uh you know air combat game but um who knows i've been surprised lately about you know undaunted and 
Blitzkrieg, which is a World War II games that I really enjoyed. Let's see if we can pull these out here. I mean, these look amazing. I uh, you know, pa already painted little uh, ships. Why well, I'm saying ships, airplanes. <laughs> okay, so this is quite okay. So this is a rule book and punch outs at once. Oh, yeah, this is cool. So these are like standies thingies. It's like a catalog. So let's see how this works. Uh, this looks a little bit, a little bit like X-wing. Reminds me of when you have these thingies that control the ships. And a small deck of cards. Let's see how this works here with... I think that's it. You have like these four airplanes and then you fly around shooting at each other. Somehow. Okay, so... Cards. Have, have anyone in the, in the chat, uh, have you guys played this game? Since it's uh, from last year. So here's like a message meet and here's like how we can move I guess. And how they can fly and all that. I think we put these out somehow. And that indicates how they're flying around. I'm not really sure what this is. This is like a tape here to keep these in place. I don't understand what it is they're keeping in place. Oh it's actually these. Oh okay okay. It's these little thingies. It's the uh, standee uh, stuff. Let's see if we can. I think we're gonna cut this. I don't think we need this. So can we? Okay, so we can put these on here. I assume we're gonna have more than one. Yeah, yeah we're gonna build up like this. Oh, I think it's sort of the same game, even if the different versions here, but they are like have of course different uh, countries and so on. Not really sure. Well, that's good, Buster. <laughs> you get some new uh, for ne next year's uh, Santa wish list. See if we, this was a bit fiddly. Can we get these things out of here? I wonder how they do this. Do they, do they do this one by one in the production? Seems like a lot of work to tape these things here. That was not the best solution for storage. Ah, very fiddly to remove these. Then again, they really fit there, so maybe that's a good idea. Okay, so if we have, I don't know how many you have, uh, but if we have something like this, then this can be flying around on the map. And yeah, <laughs> that looks really cool. And I think we'll put all of these thingies in a, in a bag instead, instead of having them like this. We can cut this. Just remove them. <laughs> War of the Ring? That's a joke, obviously. <laughs> oh, D and D Star Wars. I don't know. Is there Wings of Glory uh, with Star Wars, or do you mean like uh, that it's X Wing? So I don't know. Ah, come on. What is this? Because I haven't, I haven't really played X Wing. I've just seen people play it a bunch. Uh, as I said that at some point I am going to try it out, and I. The thing is, though, I'll probably love it. <laughs> That's why I don't want to try it. Because I don't have the time and money to start getting all those really, really cool Star Wars ships. And start tournament play and all that. So I'm sort of avoiding it for my own sake. This was like the fiddliest unboxing I ever done, I think. Having to remove <laughs> these tape stuff. Okay. There they are, all the small uh, thingies, and we can just you know store them somehow here, I guess. We'll do a bag. And yeah, so there's cards and that, and then this this whole big 
nothing of uh, rulebook and punch out. So let's take a look at that. Let's see if we can figure out. Is it four? Yeah, it's four. So it's four in size or in, in height for each of these. Since there's four ships. Okay. So let's look at this. This is a lot of punch board here. So rule book, ready to play scenario. I guess there's scenarios, yeah. And some kind of, well, this is weird. This is punching out in paper, <laughs> basically. Never seen that before, I think. So I guess these are some kind of, I don't know, boards for the green player or something like that. Ah, yeah, this is pro that's probably for the UK player and this is for the German player or something like that. Then we have a bunch of small A's and B's, whatever that is. <clears throat> you know, while I'll do this, why don't we talk a bit about Christmas and so on? Have you guys gotten any um, gaming presents from Santa? Any cool new games you uh, you have played or that you're waiting to be played? After Christmas. So, okay. This is not that exciting, I guess. Then again, there's always fast forward. And for those of you watching afterwards, that is. Or, or you can have like double speed. <laughs> so, but I, I do want to get these things sorted. Uh, that's why I'm, you know, doing this as well. So I don't have to go back to these and sort them later on again. So <clears throat> for me, I haven't, I don't know, I haven't really been uh, well. It's been some health is issues, sadly. So I haven't really done much for a Christmas celebration this year. Did play some games with Martin uh, the second day of Christmas, and that was fun. Uh, even though we played Age of Civilization, which was not one of our, no, neither of us really enjoyed it that much. Um, but you know, we had a good time just hanging out. And I'm not gonna punch all of these in, in the stream. That's crazy. There's so many of them. Look at this. <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna do it, but look at this. This is gonna take forever. So you know what? Let's just put put the stuff down here and move on to the next game because this will get too boring. So many small fiddly things. So Buster got to play Corcus on Amazonas. It was okay, but he prefers the original. You know, I can see what you're coming from. I haven't played on Amazonas, but I played the Safari, whatever that was called, like African Seven, and uh, it was okay, but I do prefer the original as well. But I heard a lot of people talk well about these. Well, I think it's Amazonas that people are talking about a bit, but also this uh, South Seas, I think, like a pirate thingy. Uh, and one thing I would like to try is the Corcassonne uh, Star Wars, even though it sounds a bit silly, but I still would like to try that out. Oops. Hey, Brian. Oh, Brian got the last Bastion for Christmas, but everybody was too was too uh, cowardly to play it. It's a hard game, but it's a fun game. I mean, I tried it in a live stream uh, a week ago, and I made it even too hard for me because I, you know, I, I misremember the rule from Ghost Stories. So I got this idea that you had to pull out cards. When you play two players, you have to pull a card for everyone, and you don't, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, because that makes the game impossible. <laughs> it's hard as it is. But that was, you know, taking it to the impossible level. So, uh, uh, yeah. I'll have to go back and revisit it. Let's do a small one. Uh, Camellio. I think this is a solo-only game, if I recall correctly. Uh, this is from uh, Bruno Catala. And, yeah. 
it's a solo game and I like that they do solo games I mean small solo games that's fun oh Everdell oh Everdell being played on Christmas and Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries. Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries is one of my hate games because it's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. But look at this. Another one from Blue Orange. And they're doing this really lovely boxes. I just love them. Why not have all games come in these kind of boxes? It's so cool. You don't have to have that whole. Uh... Okay, so here we have. Well, they really do a lot of languages for the rule books. That's smart. You can you know, publish it in many countries. Yeah, it really tightens up the board uh, in uh, Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries, and I think it's way too cutthroat. I only played it on two, though, with my former um, uh, girlfriend when we lived together. We played that a uh, bit, uh, but we both thought it was way too mean. We just started fighting. But Everdell looks fun. I would like to try Everdell at some point. I have friends that have it, but it's just, you know, as always, too many games, so I haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so this is, yeah, so this is a solo game where you... I got this explained to me. Uh, I got this demoed uh, at the Blue Orange booth, and it's something like this. You put these out here. Okay, I'm not. I don't recall exactly how it works, but you put these out here somehow. And then you need to move around and collect these tokens, and you need to do it in a certain way, and that's why it's tricky. And this is like green, so this is one of the easier ones. And then it gets harder and harder here. So it's like a solo challenge brain puzzle. You need to figure out like if I, I think it's like if you start here and you move two spaces, you have to like like take these and then uh, yeah, it's something like that. I'm gonna figure. I'm gonna learn this and do a little uh, playthrough of it because it looks really fun, and it just keeps getting harder and harder here with the, how the symbols are placed. And just a cute little game like this. I don't think we need the baggie for that. And again, love these boxes. So, yeah, you put them. Oh, you put them out like this. Yeah, and then you need to move around uh, with the mouse and eat this stuff. Okay. Then let's take a look at. Hey, man, doctor. Let's take a look at the Nishigo again from 2GM. And this, uh, well, this is some kind of Japanese fish, I think. <laughs> like these fish, uh, some people have, uh, you know, as a decoration in the garden and all that. There's like a whole, uh, there's a whole, um, wow, the box got smashed there a bit, in the, so it's hard to open. Yeah, there's like a whole uh, science thingy around these. And Bjorn likes Nordic countries, okay. Well, there you go. Some people hate some games, some people love them. That's how it is. Okay, so, um. Uh, okay, German. This looks to be no, that was Spanish. Uh, okay, so that's German. Here's English. Okay, there we go. So let's get rid of the other one. I don't save these to rule books. There's no point in it. So okay, not much here. There's three little dice, standard dice. And there's a deck of cards, so let's look at that. See what's in here. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat, get out of the train yard. Yeah, I'm not much for train train yards anyway. So I don't mind getting out. And there's the promo thing here, like the... Okay, so this is basically, look at this. It's a bunch of cards with these fish in different constellations and I guess you play them somehow these cards and that yeah that's that's, that's the whole game three dice the different colors and three different color fish this white orange and black huh. so it's kind of cool I look forward to trying these small games out it's fun Oh yeah, Camelo looks cool. I like these. Uh... And speaking of solo games, here's another solo game. This is a bigger box though. Um, this is from uh, Tony Bodale and Surprise Stare. And it, this is one of those boxes I don't like when they don't have anything showing here. <laughs> but it's for one player, 15 minutes. So this is this is probably cool. Uh, I mean, I like the idea of it. 
solo gaming in 15 minutes. So Lux Aterna, it's called by the way. So this has six dice, small dice in different colors and some tokens. <clears throat> and two decks of cards. And a little rule book, okay. This looks interesting. Hey, hey Brian, yeah, you gotta save often. That's the thing. This, I think this, there's nothing worse when you, than when you play a like campaign style computer game on your own and you forget to save. I don't know, these days it's like auto save on everything, but back in the days when I was a young, young man, uh, then uh, you forgot to save and it was so frustrating. These are like different improvised battery matrix, emergency discharge. Okay, so these card come, there's like a bunch of different colors, right? This card comes in the same colors, I guess. And yeah, nice. Big cards as well, good quality. I kind of went to their booth uh, to try to get hold of Alibari, a nice cup of tea. But it turned out that one hadn't arrived at the time when I was at their booth at Essen. So uh, they have, and I was also checking out the solo game and I picked this one up. So there will be a, okay, so these are like event cards. There will be a gameplay video for this when I figure out how to play it. But it's really nice with a solo game when it's like designed for a solo. There's so many games that you can play a solo. But that's all, you know, it's, a, it's another thing to have a game that is actually made just for solo play. And I like that the tre trend is going there because I do enjoy a so good solo game with a cup of coffee and some music in the background. That is nice. So. We go into Exploriana, which is from Triple Ace Games. Uh, this is one of the games that I was spontaneously picking up at SSB. Uh, I was like in one of my live streams, I think it was like hall six or something. It was like one of the smaller halls. I just walked by their booth and this really nice British guy uh, <laughs> demoed the game to me in the live stream really quick. And I was intrigued. I was like, okay, this looks nice. And I mean, the box cover isn't that exciting, in my opinion, <laughs> but the game looked fun. So uh, I got you know I got excited, and once I done, was done with the live stream, I went back to the booth and talked to them a little bit more, and uh, you know uh, offered them a playthrough. Basically, so they're gonna get a playthrough of this up ahead. Then again, again, there's so many games, so it's, it's gonna take a little while to get through it all. Oh, you haven't played Friday, I guess. You have to try Friday. It's awesome. It's uh, my favorite, uh, not my favorite solo game, it's not, but my. It's really good. <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, I mean, I played it. I played it a lot on the app as well on my mobile phone because it's so quick and easy, and the app handles all the, the cards for you. Even though I should say, when it comes to a deck building game as uh, Friday is, I like to play it, you know, with cards in real life because I like the feeling of deck building, uh, having a deck of cards. So, bunch of things to punch out here. These are some little. Uh, I don't know the statues, and as as the name suggests here, it's uh, all about exploration. So we're gonna go around, explore different maps. I think you can puzzle these together, right? Yeah, you can puzzle these together like that. I'm not gonna punch everything here because that would take too long. And we have more of these though, map pieces basically, and more of these little uh, stone or like uh, statues, whatever they are. Okay, so there's four of these, and somehow you puzzle these together, and you kind of move around, I guess, on these tracks and so on. So these looks nice. These um, these tokens are actually like plastic tokens. They're fairly thick. I like that. It's not these little cardboard tokens. And whatever these means, but I guess we can move around somehow. We can use these tokens. And there is a die here as well, a custom die, different symbols on it. I like custom dies. And some bags.
Yeah, I think for Friday, I think uh, the weird thing is I, I don't think I ever won, like when I played it at the card game. But then on the app I won because I started to figure out how to do it. It's, it's really a learning game. You gotta figure out how to do it. So, play your pawns and cubes. Nothing special there really, but they probably serve their purpose. Oh yeah, one deck dungeon. <laughs> I played one deck dungeon a little bit. And people really, you know, that video was really popular when I did a solo playthrough and people really liked that game and it's a big fan base. But I, I didn't really get that attached to it. I think it was pretty fun. It's it's what it says to be a one deck dungeon. I mean it's not that more than it's not that impressive in my opinion. It's a fun little game. But I don't think I will like get back to one deck dungeon. I don't think I even own it anymore. I think I sold it if I remember correctly. It's so hard with those small boxes. I have a bunch of them in my shelves. I don't even remember which are still there. I have to check board game geek. Okay, so here we have cards in different colors. Or colored backs. So maybe these are like somehow play your cards. And I like the artwork on these. It's like some weird, it's like cartoony. It's like painted artwork basically, like paintings. Hmm, okay. It was tricky to get these cards, cards open. So here we have some player aids. Okay, let's look. Let's look at this. So in a round, we recruit explorers in reverse renown order. We send explorers out in renown order. It's like player order, I guess. We explore regions. And then we check for endgame triggers and ready guides, okay? And yeah, it's like everyone has their own play raid. And here's some confidential. Oh, it's oh, it's like a quest. Collect four or more cards from each of the two different regions. So this is like a quest you do. And here's some different characters it looked like. Like the researcher, look at the top three cards of the deck, put them back in any order. Yeah. Pretty standard stuff, so I guess you get a character and you get, or maybe you recruit them into your party or something, because they have, do have a money cost up there. I guess you can buy these as you go, you do have money in the game. And then you also have these cards uh, with those uh, drawings and all that. And that's about it in the box here. But um, yeah, there's more punch outs to do, but I think it looks nice. I think the, what really you know caught my eye was the whole, I like exploration, sort of as a theme, and, and that, that looked fun, so put these tokens in here. Cards. I'll have to go back to this and punch everything out later on, it's not fun for you to just watch me punch stuff out. So, let's see if we can fit this back in here. Somehow. And that's the ninth game actually. It's only one more game to uh, go to take a look at. But you know, I found a lot of interesting stuff in here in this pile. A uh, bunch of soloing stuff as well, which I look forward to. And Draco is saving the Draco is saving the best for last. Because Draco is so excited for this. This is from La Vladimir Tsuchi and Delicious Games. The Monster Baby Rescue, and I think this game is like made for Draco. Uh, it's it's like they thought about him when they made the game, which they obviously didn't do. But you know, he can pretend that they did, uh, because this game is all about saving monsters, babies, which is something that Draco does enjoy, and he can feel you know connected to. So okay, so this explains how to do the insert, huh? Oh, you're supposed to put the punch boards in the bottom. I haven't seen... That's interesting. I don't think I've seen that before, that they tell you to save the punch board, the, the punch board and use them in the bottom. But that's good, because then, you know, you're probably going to get a good... Uh, so it doesn't get too low in the box. And some setup. And rule book in German. And rule book in English. 
And yeah, look at this. So the, <laughs> these are the monsters. And I've seen a little bit of this game. I got a demo as well, lesson. So the monster come in, comes in like this, and he's all dirty, and you know the monster baby needs taken care of. And then you help him out, and he becomes happy, and he becomes clean. <laughs> so, and you have like three different parts of the body that you can you know uh, attend to. So <laughs> this looks very cute, this game. And um, yeah, as I said, I think this is sort of made for Draco. He can take care of the little dragon teddy bear, for example. That's something he really looks forward to. And here's some kind of board, uh, key, you know, to surround the board with. And all these are like, I think these are like, uh, if you get the body to level four, then you get this and the hearts, I think, are points. Which is cute as well, of course. It fits the theme. So we have these like missions, I think, out there. And here's the actual board. So it's the little board you move around on. Uh, this game has a um, the time track mechanism. So whoever is in the last place get to go. So that's always interesting. Like Tokaido or Glenmore and so on. Oh, here's some. Yeah, here's the teddy bear. And he's so dirty and sad. And look at that. And then he becomes happy. Or she. I don't know. We're going to get all of these sorted out here. Uh, for the different animals. Yeah, so you move around on this board. And you do basically different actions. And those actions lets you help out your little um, monster baby. And whoever does that best is the winner. You get points and so on. A little stop sign there. And some more of these missions or sort of objectives. And more of these. I think these are like where you have, I think these are like if you're the green player, you have this and you have your cards here and all that. This is something I would like to have for uh, Draco's Adventure. That would be nice to have as player boards, but they. It's, it's, it requires a bigger box, so they have to fold, and you know they cost money, and it's you know it's been tricky to figure out how we would do that in a good way. So it's not going to happen right now, but it is like an idea I have for the future, is that I would like to have those kind of player board sort of for for the game. You don't really need it, but it makes it easier to see uh, stuff in the game. And again, for those of you that just arrived, if you have any questions or concerns or ideas or suggestions or requests or whatever, just tell them in the you know tell them in the chat. Uh, it's a good opportunity since we are in the same place. Look at that! Here's a dragon, Draco. This is going to be Dra Draco's uh, favorite thing to care for—a little dra dragon baby. But it's so sad. It's so sad, and it's dirty. But then you can make it happy like this. Yeah. So I guess Draco will be using that. We will do a uh, two-player round trip for this, of course, uh, up ahead. And some dogs as well, cute little dogs, a, a three-headed dog. Can't be easy to have three heads. So a bunch of these. I like how these uh, pets or these, uh, uh, here's another dragon. Wow, that's more like you, Draco. Uh, I like how these all have these really nice cardboard thingies. It's not cards or anything. So a bunch of these here, and we're getting close to the end. Okay, so here's the different, it looks like these are the different uh, monster babies that you can take care of. And this is some kind of goal, I guess. If you get to this and that level, you get so and so many points. And I'm not sure what these tiles are for, but there's also some kind of goal you can reach. Uh, you're also making some little pens like this to keep the monster baby in. That's also a way to get points, I think. And there's the three-headed dog. <laughs> wow, this just keeps going. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do all of these. This I'm gonna do these off cam. There's a bunch of these. There's some crystals and stuff. And oh, you can make a little bed for them as well, <laughs> of course. So not much in here, but as the, oh yeah, now I'm throwing the, the punch outs away. You're supposed to put them here at the bottom to lift this up. 
Here's some uh, really nice gems as well. And some standees for something. I don't know. Maybe for these? I don't know. You don't have standees for the monsters, I think. But yeah, that's Monster Baby Rescue. Looks really cute. And this is something that is high up there on the list to get filmed. I'm going to try to do that soon uh, in a two play round through. But there's so many games uh, around. And actually, something I will do today that I'm really excited for is the um, last night I got to borrow the um, Castles of Burgundy, the new version, sort of deluxe version uh, from Matt, my friend. So I am going to film that today in a solo playthrough. That's going to be fun. Hi, Brian. Uh, well, you know what? It's going to be. You know what? Let's let let's take a few minutes here. Uh, at the end of the stream, I was thinking an hour, so let's take a few minutes and make some. Since I've been talking about it, let's take a look at it as well because it's going to be confusing for you people. Uh, I'm just talking about stuff that I'm not showing. So, here, here's Draco's Adventures, or Adventure as it's turned out, it was called since I, I forgot an S there at the end when I did the Board Game Geek thingy. So, this is uh, Draco's own game. Well, it's my design, but anyway, and uh, this is, well, this is sort of prototype, but sort of like the first version. Oh, here's the Draco stickers. I've been wondering where these Draco stickers were, and they were in the box. Okay, that's good for me to find out. Okay, so yeah, and there's some player aids. These are going to be refined, but uh, this is the sort of the beginning of them. And I did on a box of this already, but here's some meatballs. You're trying to collect meatballs in this game. You have your little Draco meatball moving around on the map. There's more stuff that I, yeah, don't need to be there. So basically, oh yeah, because of Burgundy solo plate, it's going to be awesome. And this uh, insert here, this is not that sturdy. Uh, it does look good though, I think. It's kind of fun to have the Viking and Draco flying to the meatball tree in the background. <laughs> Uh, but we have a um, E-Raptor insert as well that's going to be, and that, to answer your question, uh, to answer Brian's question, there's going to be two pledge levels, so there's going to be one for the base game that looks like this, or like the basic game. And I, 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 back here you can see, uh, you can see sort of how the game looks when set up with the map and everybody has their cards and all that. It's a drafting game where you also program your cards in order to move on the map with your little Draco Meeples. But then there's also going to be like a deluxe version. Where you will have the Eraptor wooden insert, which will look awesome. So that's coming as well. And then, uh, of course, if you want to support the channel, you can, you know, you can pledge whatever you want. And but then in, you know, this is for February. This game is going to be out on Kickstarter for February. And then in May, I will do my annual Kickstarter for the channel, where you can support the channel and get some fun rewards and so on. And that's something I haven't even started working on yet, but I will work on that through. For, you know the first part of the year here and get some fun rewards and so on but so the map will be like this basically uh, Out there and you will move around and you'll have different obstacles like if you find a Viking Draco really likes Vikings as you might know So he will stop here and admire the white Viking Yeah, uh, this could be like this a men here stone that you have to fly over or jump over uh, There's a you know a meatball tree obviously where you can go you know, get some meatballs, so you can get some boosts, and there's mud, and little dragons can't run in mud, they're gonna get stuck, and they're gonna have to run fast to get through it. And there's an elk, and here's the uh, holy grail of meatballs that you wanna get to at the end, that uh, you wanna get, collect all these meatballs, and yeah. So, uh, you know, you can't fly if there's a storm going, so you have to run on the ground here, so. So that's uh, just a quick look at uh, the game but i'm also going to show you like the action cards they look like this these are the cards that you're going to draft you can spew fire at your opponents and you know destroy one of their cards you can be jumping you can be sitting down chilling in the grass or walking or going back a little bit something might be scary when you're a little pet dragon oh draco likes heat yeah but it's like, yeah, it's like, this is kind of weird. It's like Draco and his cousins. There's like, everybody's Draco. <laughs> but you can still, you know, drop a card, basically. You get, get confused on what you were supposed to do when you get burned. And um, 
as you can see here, there's also half meat bolts on the side of the cartridge. So if you put the cartridge out like this, then you will form a full meat bowl in the middle. And that's like seven continent, I stole that from. And then you can get if a extra meat bowl at the end of the round. And you use those meat bowls, like if you're gonna go out, uh, Let's see, when you go out walking, you're only gonna walk one step, but if, you have, if you're eating a meat bowl, you will walk two steps. So that's a way to boost your way around the map. Yeah, it's really cute artwork. I'm really happy for that. Um, the, um, it's Jan Kustfeldt, uh, the designer from uh, Gothenburg, or like the graphic designer that made the artwork. And I sh yeah, as you can see, there's no rule book in the box right now. So that's something I'm working on. I gotta get that finished, get it printed and all that. And then I will have these uh, sort of ready for February. It's not going to be complete, of course. When you do a a Kickstarter, you don't have to have a game complete. But I want to have it as complete as I can, so that people see what they get when they back. And it's also like, of course, a little bit of of you know marketing going on here as well. And there's also going to be a learn to play video that is, you can scan. You can find it, find it like that, like the QR code system. I will not go to Gen Con, sadly. Uh, that's not in my schedule <laughs> for that's too much money uh, to go to Gen Con. But I will, I will, however, you know, be at UK Games Expo and Essence Beal, of course, next year. So there's two, the two big ones, and then there's a bunch of Swedish, um, you know, smaller conventions and so that I would go to. And maybe something in Norway and closer by. But I think that's uh, I think that's we're gonna end it here. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who's been in the chat and you know kept me company <laughs> with unboxing. I'm gonna con I'm gonna complete this off cam so that it's uh, unboxed and ready for some play soon. Do a gameplay video with Draco. It's gonna be really fun. See how that uh, monster baby rescue game works. And if you're watching this afterwards, also thank you for watching. Uh, I should say that I'll be back tonight with a uh, Keyforge stream, a live stream with Keyforge online, where I will be playing against All For One Gaming, which is a Twitch streamer. So it's gonna, if you like Keyforge, it's gonna be really fun because you, you're gonna be able to go to Twitch and see the match from his perspective, and he's gonna give his commentary, and then I'm gonna do mine on YouTube. And so uh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun format. I haven't, we haven't tried that before, and I don't really know him that well. It's just an idea that popped up. Uh, since I got in contact with him. Yeah, I hope to see you at, at UK Games Expo, Buster. Uh, I'll probably I'll probably set up something at UK Games Expo, like one of the evenings, a uh, certain time and place, or like at the at the hotel, uh, Hilton or whatever it's called. So we, you know, people can come and, and play some games and we can meet up, because that's really fun. I did that at SS Beal uh, a few months ago. That was really fun to meet, meet people and just have a good time playing games all night. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, you know, if you have, if you haven't uh, if I haven't said it already to you, happy new year. Just a few more days to go, and then we'll get a new year with a bunch of new gaming, hopefully. <laughs> so take care and bye bye.